All right, Silver Junglers, are you ready for some Jax versus some Shaco? Early Vision down for us against the Shaco, so we see where he is. Jax is starting with a leash on red. I mean, a leash in Season 14, unbelievable. Look, it's okay to get a leash, except against a Shaco, you don't want to get a leash. Never. Because you want to be completely unknown. Now, the Shaco needs to think, huh, not, oh, my guy got a leash. I know where he is now. I can invade him. He needs to think, huh, where is the Jax? Where is the enemy jungler? Did he start leashes blue? Did he start leashes red? Is he going raptors? Is he reverse clearing? I don't know, which means I have to full clear down or make an investment in a gank, right? Like I have to gank in a lane, I have to show up and show myself, and the Jax can then hold the power of knowledge. Now, in this particular case, though, we know exactly where the Shaker started thanks to our ward again, I think. Most of the time you will know these things if you pay attention to them, but the Shaker also knows exactly where the Jax is. So we have a Viego top lane here. Shaco looks and says, you know what? I don't really want to do that. Now he looks mid lane and says, I actually think I might want to do that. Presses a Q here. The Vagar completely disrespects it. Puts the box down. Nice flash away from the, uh, from the <laughs> Vagar. But at that point, I think you have to acknowledge that you're dead because the two ship going to get you. And the Shaco now moves to the bottom side. Because remember, this spell right here, two ship, you see that? Can you see that? The slow. If the target is less than 30% health, it deals more damage instead. So you're getting that extra bonus juice on it as well. And now you absolutely must head to Fukaiu.gg. Not only do I have a free jungle improvement resource, I also have a dedicated program with jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching classes, a jungle VOD library, special weekly content you'll see nowhere else, as well as all of this hosted in a private jungle discord. And if there is one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers go from low elo to high elo, as seen by the great number of success stories from the end of last season and already the beginning of season 14. So to climb faster than everybody you know and to jump Jungle Diff every game you play, head to vakaya.gg or click the link in the description below. Jax will watch this and go on his wolves, the Shaco then will translate gank down to the bottom side. So, passive there for the Shaco, on the two shift, more damage when you attack from behind, and obviously the uh, HP threshold there for bonus damage. And now he is on the wrong side of the wall and says, hello Caitlyn, the hook goes through, now she'll flash in a different direction, so that's not exactly the hook you always want. But uh, that's fine here, I think, you know, burning all summoner spells. From the Shaker's perspective, and great follow from the Draper, and the Shaker sticking with it, not giving up on the gank. Huge, actually, for a silver gank. That's a really good overall silver gank. I like seeing that. Because the biggest problem with silver ganks, low elo ganks, no offense, is that you don't know how to maximize the opportunity. The Shaker here, Quadrant, no. Full commit, full send, hits everything, goes down here, same thing. A lot of low elo junglers give up too much on their ganks when they could actually see good results just by sticking to it. The Jax, though, doesn't do anything incorrect, except this drag here is a complete waste of time. You know Shaco's down here, there's no point to drag it up whatsoever, drag it down, get to the, ri the river quicker. Less pronounced in the season, but still, drag it, get to the river quicker. This is actually not so bad in Season 14, actually, but I do prefer a more direct approach, kind of outward, and get there. However, the reason is also because you should be doing a sequencing technique. So if you're going to go red, frogs, raptors, wolves, and you know Shaco's going down, do the grump. Don't do the blue. Because if you do the grump now into the blue, you go straight to the river. Nice, quick, fire thing, right? We don't have to walk over the same ground. And then, of course, you reset if nothing happens, and you're going to do one, two, three, four again. And in a matchup like this one, where you have a Shaco cheesing and ganking a lot, making you miserable, making your laners miserable, the only thing you can do here is, is sequence properly and get your maximal experience. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to do a quadrant gank, multiple lanes, fall back to Scuttle into your blue side quadrant, which is what he's done here, and you know that the Shaco started on the Raptors, and you saw he started on the Raptors because you had a war down, you know that at least by 4 minutes, 4 minutes or 3, that the Raptors are going to have respawned at a higher level. So basically the Jax, you should know, okay, look, because he did 12 CS, went down here 12 CS, and now he's going to fall back to all of these things, which you should know, why don't we go ahead and steal this and leave a ward here? Because this ward here, the two that he has, are massive for tracking a Shaco. So if he loses this game, he loses it because he doesn't take control of the map versus the Shaco and for his team. Move into the jungle. Heal the Raptors. Leave a ward. Leave a ward here or even leave a ward on the Krugs if you want. Now go back to base. And basically what this does is while this guy will be delayed, which he most likely should be, and he could repeat gank for sure. If he just finishes the quadrant and resets and now comes topside, there's nothing. And because we'll see him, your laners can hopefully respect this. Or you can counter gank it or take a dragon or, or control objectives. Let's see what happens. Because that's fundamental to what you have to do here. The Shaco now sees the roaming Blitzcrank and says, you know what? Why don't I just gank instead of doing wolves? Again, 
Huge decision, 100% agree with it. This is great jungling by the Shaco. All the more reason for the Jax here to be doing this, to leave a ward here, to leave a ward here. And if you see this, say you were a little slower, but you saw this, cancel your base. Take his Krux too. Can I get top lane? Maybe I can do something. Not, maybe not this game, but maybe other games you can do. Now you can go back to base and control your Krux. And now you basically say, look, I cannot match the, the ganking and the cheese of the Shaco, but I can damn well get my own experience and deny him his experience as well. Does a farming jungler or someone who scales versus Shaco, that is fundamental to how you actually have success against that champion. Now, he's going to go back to base. Obviously, he should go top side to maximize his experience. So Jack's going to do the red side here as well. He might look to go ahead and do a gank here, but this is unnecessary. Look at the wave state. You're never going to make this gank work. It's not possible. It pushed up. It's a victor. The guy, uh, we got the wrong things. There we go. The guy obviously has no sums at all, but I failed to see how the gravity well of destiny is, is not going to stop you now. He, what we can do here is cut into this and snack this up based upon the lane we have, which again, isn't a terrible play, but you're not going to be able to finish this and run across mid lane and do something about grubs. The Shaco here obviously shows up. The Viego doesn't pay attention to it. That should be another two shift. Easy execute for us. So you didn't even need it because you're cute to see from behind as well. Yeah. So while we're taking this, he's like, okay, well, I still got my tier two camps on the top side, the respawn camps. I still get free grubs. And this is what I'm trying to tell people in low elo. Is it worth the jacks here doing any of this? This is not good for anybody, right? It's good for Caitlin and for you. But if you maximize your experience and said, look, let me save the dragon for another time because I know this guy's going to be top side. Look, see, this is what I'm trying to say here. I don't care if you get something here. It's, it's silly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wait, let's hold up this playthrough. No, nothing. Okay. This is what I was saying in my, my main channel videos last week. Everyone was complaining about the five-minute grubs. I said, why are you complaining about them? Because I had to choose between dragon and grubs. No, you didn't. No one was doing a five-minute dragon and then losing five-minute grubs. Like, maybe it was happening, but very rarely. In low elo, for sure, it might be happening. But in most cases, it should not be happening. And no one's going to coin flip a random five-minute dragon at level four if there's a small chance someone shows up and contests it. And I put a video out on Saturday. Coaching video. Diamond level Kane. Got into D3. Uh, he's on his way. He should end up master tier by the end of the season. Guy's really good at improving every time he plays. We talked about this, and he decided to coin for this dragon. And guess what? The enemy jungle shut up because they know that you're going to try and coin for the dragon. So at a higher level, it doesn't. it's not just enough to do the dragon. They won't do the grubs if it makes no sense. I'll say, well, I can kill you for free on the dragon and take the dragon. Then I can kill you and take the grubs, right? So what's not going to happen now at six minutes is, hey... Let me do this dragon and beeline it for grubs. You're never going to get there in time, and this is a great example. Because he knew or understood that you weren't in the picture and he could easily do this, maybe he even saw you on a ward, he just does the grubs while you do the dragon. And you can never run across the map and get there. And now sequencing is all completely messed up, and what this means is you have a lack of impact on the map as a jungler. Or if you just sequenced upside, maybe you can counter gank this. Unlikely, but maybe you can. If Shaco doesn't gank top lane and carries on going down, then you get free grubs, right? And because you've got Bar Prio, he's not going to naturally just do this for no reason. So maybe he could do grubs and beeline for the dragon. Don't think you necessarily should, but this, in this instance, maybe you could, right? So it's just about putting yourself in a better position. The guy was just like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go and do the dragon. It wasn't, there was no tracking, there was no strategic thought to it. Now the Shaco's going to walk up to him, he wants to make sure he gets the Gromp, and then he's going to just fight him and ignite him and say, Can I kill you, sir? Uh, Jax says, I am Jax. Doesn't really matter. Viego's rotating, he has ult plus flash here, actually, so uh, Q to see if he's on a pretty low cooldown. Oh, no, that's a 12 second cooldown. <laughs> 12 second cooldown. I always... This is the thing that I forget, because I had this, this, uh, uh, this game where I covered many years ago, and with the amount of haste we had, we were talking about like seven second cooldowns and the Q to Sieve and things like that. And for some reason, it's like a, an earworm that just sticks whenever the shake of video. I'm like, and the seven, the seven seconds on the Q to Sieve, not true, it's 12 seconds. It's, it's decent, but even with haste, once you get a couple points into this sucker here, you will get it down, right? So the mobility will come to you. But for now, just so you know, it's 12 seconds. When you see a shaker early on, right, being completely compromised with this power thing and things like that, and maybe being in a dangerous position, um, Know that if you just used it, you have 12 seconds to do something magical. Now, 
The Shaco abuses the Jax with his suboptimal pathing. Now the Jax is going to hold mid lane, goes up to his wolves, is going to pass down because he's got nothing else to do. So in this case, you would think, wow, my team are feeding a Shaco, this sucks. No. Shaco's always going to get fed. The Nunus, the Javans, the Shakos, the Shinshaos are going to gank more than what you can do, most likely. They're going to have better impact, most likely. But what you have to do is strategically counter jungle them at crucial moments. Hey, this guy did cheese ganks and nice bottom side. Let me take his top side quadrant, right? Respawn camps, I'll take them. Let me go back to base. Yeah, I can sequence up. I don't need to coin for the dragon. If I just full sequence, I'll be up 20, 30 CS on the Shaco very, very quickly. And with a level lead and item advantage, hopefully, if I'm playing it correctly, uh, by mid game, you should be able to dominate that phase, right? But it does involve you giving up a few things. In the meantime, though, we're only up by 6 CS, right? The Shaco has gotten all the grubs. Draven is here. The Shaco is ganking again while the, the Jax is farming. Uh, it's well warded up, actually, which is huge, and this pathing's not so good from the Shaco here. Hopefully they don't fall for it, but it looks like that it doesn't matter if they're going to fall for it. Healer's burned. Draven super duper low, and Jax says... Yeah. For sure, necessary uh, gank. For sure, uh, I'm, I'm a good jungler here. Uh, obviously, three points in the, the, the W at this particular stage. Shaco's gone that way. The, don't let this result... Distract you from the fact that this guy's done nothing but farm all game. No impact. No impact whatsoever. Like, why? Why would you even remotely... <laughs> why would you ult that, first and foremost? Secondly, you did steal the kill from her. Now, he's going to try and do the scuttle. If you're the Shaco, just leave. Um, obviously, we're going to flash over the wall there to try and go on the Shaco. We're not tracking those things. The Vega is able to kill the, 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 the Victor. Does the Shaco try to go back in? He will die if he does. Now, the Jax is really deep here, but he is quite strong as uh, Jax would suggest. The problem is he's not ranged, and uh, Draven is going to do all of the, the damage to him. So, um, Right? I, I, everything I explained so far is about, hey, look, I cannot match the Shaco. Let me at least have a, a strong map impact with my sequencing, a strong understanding of how to impact this game in a positive way, and hopefully then my team and I will be able to withstand this pressure because we'll have map control. Now, the Shaco is able to gank. The Jax doesn't punish him. The Jax doesn't even sequence correctly. The Jax wastes time doing a dragon. You don't really need to waste time doing because it's not about getting the dragon. It's about your economy per minute. Now, he goes farming again while the, the Shaco shows up and he goes farming. End of story. He goes farming. And he's lucky to get a kill in that environment. It was a chaos, let's be honest. Yeah, wild. And now we're going to go to our Grump. The Grubs are up. We're not tracking the Shaco whatsoever. We're thinking, oh, maybe he's here. Let me go for this objective first. The problem with that is, obviously, if Shaco shows up, Victor can rotate. Akali has prior. So he's doing this objective to just kind of do it for the sake of it. Akali immediately rotates. Don't tell me in some of that they don't rotate. Here you go. And now it's just a regular coin flip, random ass fight for no particular reason. Um, and we die to the Victor. There's a rotation I'm talking about. The, the, the objective timing is awful. There's no understanding of laner priority whereas the shaco has had that relatively like the path thing here wasn't you know amazing but he did a good job being there right at least trying to do things so five zero three good escape and now six grubs and when you've got a draven and six grubs things are going to happen that are good for you so next time you have a shaker or a nunu or something like this against you please understand that you cannot stop them in a direct way. You're not going to be able to do what they do, but you can very much impact the map in a strong way and control the enemy jungler. Just chill a little bit, and then you'll eventually take over in the mid game. Got to accept these things. Obviously, if the Shaker makes a bunch of mistakes and uh, you punish him with a counter gank and you know you actually win these fights because you play them properly, then that's always great. But at this point, it's just a case of Silver Jungle Shaco goes ahead and does good ganking practices. He backs the lanes and gets fed. Jax farms and hopes he wins. But now the Shaco is doing the same thing, right? Shaco is doing the same thing. Let me just do this dragon for no particular reason. Um, <laughs> obviously, the, the, the contest is not always good, but look here. What you have to factor into these scenarios is my mid lane is here. Yes, my support is here. The Vega is going to show up with the Jax. Now, obviously, the bottom lane in this particular environment, you watch this, right? You know that they're going back to base because they're low HP. But the the Caitlyn does sag off, right? She does sag off, she's reasonably strong, and she does have a lot of gold. But, in theory, while this is good, 
you do have to pay very close attention to where the mid is, where the enemy jungler is, and where the enemy bot lane is for sure. Because Draven's in base and Victor has no prior. So when you look at it, you're like, okay, I could do this dragon because I think Caitlyn and Rakan went back to base. Let's Crank's here, and I know I'm strong enough to do it. Fine, fair. But then if you're going to do that, pull it out. Pull it out a little bit so if they do contest and things go badly, you can at least leave. Don't sit in the pit and give them free angle of approach. Look at this. He just literally walks at him for free with Vega from the back line here. And now Jax overcommits, gets hit by the, the fear from the clone. Victor rotates, they explode him, and now they're going to lose everything. So both jungles are a little bit off there. The Jax should say, look, Draven's coming from base. Victor can rotate. Blitzcrank is, is, is there, you know, maybe. Uh, we're outnumbered 4-2. to two. Let me just give it up. Give it up. That's it. Let Shake have it, give it up. From the Shaker's perspective, okay, I expect them to give it up, but let me position in such a way that if they don't give it up, I at least can hopefully reposition, we can kill them and then take it without me dying or making it a close call. Because at the end of the day, that was, while well, fine, still a little close, right? Hopefully that makes sense. It's a bit, bit wishy-washy because you got to look at prior back and forth, but the Jacks obviously, they overcommit to the steal because of the Victor's rotation and the numbers disadvantage. And here we go. Counter ganks. See, this is where you want to show up, right? Shaco's ganking. Your laners are disengaging. You counter gank and rotate immediately. Jerry's got no mana. You say, yo, 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 yo. Leap strike is up. Cool. Push, push, push. No, stay. Push. You got eight seconds for, for, for plates. You don't have grubs. But in another scenario, if this is a 13-minute gank, a 13, 25-minute gank, please push. Right? Please push this out. The next wave is coming. Get the plates. Maximize the plates. Maximize turret damage. Bother dead. I know they complain in low elo about you stealing their stuff, but don't steal their stuff. Don't do it. <laughs> Just push it, and then push the terror plates. Uh, no need to tax unnecessarily to make them angry. Just say, hey, look, I'm just pushing so we can take turrets. That's it. Uh, because of the grubs, the victor has taken the mid lane. Carly's showing up with the roam as well. And now you can say from the Jaxxer's perspective, yeah, but all my lanes are losing for Kayu. What exactly am I meant to do? And the ultimate question to this is... No, not what do I do when all my lanes are losing? How could you have prevented all your lanes from losing in some capacity? And hopefully a lot of what we've discussed here uh, shows you that, right? By compromising the shaker a bit more, from changing how the map is being played without any free stuff, and then by rotating to certain counter ganks, you'd be in a much better position. The shaker would not be as strong, you would be stronger. This wouldn't be happening, but every time something happens, he's farming. Every time something happens, he's not in the picture. And now he's losing experience, his team are dying, and it's going to be a slow bleed and loss unless he tries something drastic. So, what can he try? If your whole team are losing like this, best thing for you to do is make sure you're controlling all of your camps, putting some deep vision down, and you chill. Bomb, you hold waves, and you chill. When you see someone show up somewhere else on the map, when you see two people show up somewhere else on the map, that's when you look to make an, a pick of your own, right? Like two top, your whole team are here, make a pick, push mid lane. Now three people top lane chasing something for no reason, now we can push turrets for bounties, right? That's, you're always looking for the numbers advantage. Here now, obviously, okay, you're in a compromised position, dealing the blow. I don't mind the idea of it, but it's not quite what we're talking about, right? Which is control your jungle, control your vision, and make numbers advantage plays. So if I have two and you have one, we make a play. If I have four and you have two, we make a play. If you have four and we have three, we don't make a play. You basically make it so that you always have the numbers advantage, okay? There's the flash burn, but the problem is you're quite far behind at this particular stage, but still fine in principle. Um, and you let them tilt into you. Now, the problem is you've got to make sure you're making the right decision here. And obviously two people here, the victor's super far ahead. This is a tough one. I'm not going to lie to you, this is tough. But don't treat... Right? Don't treat the things that are unimportant here. Treat the actual disease, not the symptoms. Treat the actual disease. Because the problem here isn't, hey, look, I'm in this game state, what do I do? It's, how do I prevent being in this position at all? That's always the most important thing about jungling, especially at 17 minutes. You have to understand that that's jungling in a nutshell. Now, Vic, like, Vega's like, help me! Obviously, they're gonna be here. It's only turret available. Uh, Jax decides, you know what, I better rotate to this one here. Vega gets a kill in the Akali. Uh, the Victor, I'm sorry, the Victor, the Shaker decides to Full send it. Nice stun there by the Jax. I'm going to bonk him to finish. Cool. Great. Now, most likely, you could lose a dragon from this if Caitlyn is, is, is if Draven is positioned correctly and he's actually looking to, uh, to help his team, but maybe he's buying and chilling in base. Angry about something? Who knows? Free thinker. Victor shouldn't necessarily be here whatsoever. This is a coin flip. Big loss from the Victor. Like, why are we remotely 
in that position. Now there's no objective. So what do you do when they make a mistake, numbers wise, you punish them, clean up some shutdowns. Now what? Push waves. Get three dead. Draven's not on the map. Only Blitzcrank was on the map. I don't see anybody. Push, 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 push. Don't do this. Right? There's a Draven now. Push this out before this gets to the stage, right? Go and take those. Push this out. Right? Dragons up. Go do the dragon. The worst thing you can do in a losing game state when you kill three people from their own mistakes and Akali TPs to the top lane is not do something that's an objective that helps you actually get the bounty there. Get something that pushes the map. You took walls, which you can always take. You can always fall back to those. There's no Baron at the moment. It's perfect. However, why? You don't, she's level 13, man. She's level 13, and now you took yourself out of the game. Dragon is available. They will just position to take it. Yep. Three Bs. Caitlyn chills. Tries to ult. Unlucky a little bit, actually. Rakan's top lane holding away for no particular reason. You can't complain as a jungler when this is your game plan. You're like, I'm 6 5 zero. These were all novelty kills. These were not kills you earned. This was not jungling kills. These were cleanups. Lucky things, and obviously enemy making mistakes, which is fine. Draven goes in, gets the kill. We saw the flash be burned. Rukan's going to go in, gets a charm into the leap strike. We'll take that W bonk. But in the meantime, six grubs, bottom lane. Let's shove it out. Every time. Grubs are valuable. Not worth doing a level four dragon, guys. You're losing too much time on your farm, your experience. You're giving up free grubs to teams that are actually going to know what to do with it. And as you can see, they do kind of know what to do with it here. Herald used as well. How do you beat this? You chill and you let them tilt into you. You farm the supers as they come to you. We're not doing any of those things. We're not doing any of those things. This is actually fine though. Yep. Red team, slow. Well, as I said it, I was gonna say red team, slow, take the inhib and bounce. It went a little bit too aggressive, and Alshay goes dead. As is the way. Jax is going to get that flash leap strike, and then he's going to get a kill there, but Akali shows up. One more! Clutch Axe from the Draven. Clutch Disruption from the Draven. I think the Akali was dead there. So both teams, Jax a little too deep, Red Team a little bit too greedy. Take the inhib, but eventually they will secure it, and uh, they don't... They're not in a position to really relax as much, because... When I told you what to do with the losing uh, lanes and how to chill and farm and control, we didn't do those things. There's only so many things that you can do to actually win these kinds of games, and it's not that many things. So when you don't push the map multiple times, when you don't make picks multiple times, when you show up in the wrong position, when you go farm wolves instead of doing anything else, you're going to run out of options, right? There's no magic pill. At this particular stage, if you're like, well, what do I do? I've, at each point where you've had options, you just haven't done any of them. Eventually, you lose. Don't do nothing and expect to win. This is not pro play, guys. But you can farm 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh, do you remember the games? The, the, the days where that was actually true? 0-0, zero, zero, 1 kill, 28 minutes, 30 minutes. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Either way, hopefully you get a little bit of an idea about how you can handle the shakeout. Yes, you got your lanes fed and they should respect it to a certain degree. But at the same time, it's not about them. It's about you. How do I play around it? How do I kill him, counter gank him? How do I get fed myself? All that good stuff. And you would prevent yourself losing winnable games. Thank you very much for watching. See you all in the next one.